we were discussing the differential pair which is made using a pair of uh, identical transistors coupled at the source and biased at some tail current i not this is known as the tail current and for a load because we want a high gain we use a current mirror load to have a high gain what we need is a current source here as the load let us assume that the input is differential that means you apply half the input to one side and negative half the input to the other side. Now, to get a high gain what you need is a current source load, but this business of mirroring from this side has many advantages first of all you are not wasting this current. Also you saw that this current will appear here and in the Norton equivalent you see that the Norton current will be gm times V d instead of gm by 2 times V d. Okay. So, first if m 1 is precisely matched to m 2 and m 3 and m 4 are also exactly matched this voltage would be V d d minus V s g 3 at a current of I naught by 2. I will use this notation to mean that it will be whatever V s g required for that current. So, now this circuit is actually not symmetrical right when the circuit is fully symmetrical you can use the half circuit and so on, but this circuit is not actually symmetrical okay, because this side you have diode connection that side you do not, but we can still find the small signal equivalent. The trick that makes it simpler is to try and find the Norton equivalent first we terminate it with same the same voltage. this does not disturb the equilibrium no current flows through here everything remains the same as it was and so on. Okay. So, once you do that once you terminate this side by a voltage source which is essentially an incremental short circuit. Okay. So, then we evaluated the small signal equivalent right between the output and ground what did we have if we have a difference voltage V d the Norton current is g m 1 times V d, where g m 1 is the g m of m 1 at a current of I naught by 2. Okay. G m of m 1 and m 2 they will be the same. Now, this is not complete we have to consider the effect of output conductances, because now of course, the gain is infinite, but in reality it will not be. So, if you have output conductances for m 3 and m 4 that is let us first consider lambda n to be 0, but lambda p is not 0. So, that means that there will be some conductance here and there will be some conductance across that. So, what is the effect of that? What happens? So, we saw this here that if we have G d s 3 across these two transistors and V d happens to be equal to 0, then these currents will become these current sources will become open circuits okay because if you have only current sources then the only way for uh, this uh, the tail node voltage will also be at zero and these currents will also be equal to zero okay remember while calculating the output conductance you apply a test voltage like this and find the current okay so because of this it does not mean that every control source is necessarily 0, but in this particular case it so happens. Okay. In this case this uh, what you can write down the equations and see if you assume some V s here then the sum of these two currents has to be 0. So, it will uh, immediately tell you that this voltage has to be 0 and these currents are also 0 okay. and because this current is 0 the voltage here is 0 and this current also becomes 0. Okay. So, it turns out that the output conductance is simply G d s 3. Okay. This is fine. Yeah. 
Yeah, it will make a difference. So, if you have only lambda p to be non zero, then the output conductance will be G D S 3. So, you will have a resistance across it that is G D S 3. Okay. Now, let us consider the other case where lambda n is not 0 and lambda p is 0. Okay. What will happen in this case? have GDS 1 and GDS 1 across them. Okay. So, now what will be the output conductance? What will the output conductance be? You can analyze it and see it is a little cumbersome, but I mean it is amenable to regular circuit analysis. The important thing here is that these current sources are not inactive anymore. Okay. When you apply a test voltage, this voltage will not be 0. Right, when you have the G D S 1. So, you will get some value here and it turns out that it is very close to G D S 1. Okay. The output conductance will be close to G D S 1. You can take it as an exercise and do it for yourself and see you will find some value. It will be slightly messy expression, but if you make some approximations you will see that it is very close to G D S 1. Okay. It is actually quite interesting to see how much current flows this way and how much current flows that way and so on. Okay. It is not that the current flows only downwards or upwards, there will be currents in every transistor. Now, if you have both uh, lambda n and lambda p to be not 0, then again you can calculate the uh, total output conductance, it will turn out to be close to G D S 3 plus G D S 1, okay. just like in a CMOS inverter. right? So, I would not go into the analysis of it, but you can take this as the small signal model of the differential pair for differential inputs. Okay. Is this fine? The small signal model, I mean you can always use a Norton or Thevenin equivalent. In this case, the Norton equivalent is the easiest thing and it looks like a transistor, but with a differential input. Here I have only considered differential inputs that is I have assumed that plus half of the voltage is applied here and minus half is applied there and so on. This is okay. So, the equivalent circuit is just a controlled current source in parallel with a conductance again just like a transistor. right? What is that? Ah, yeah, yeah, that is right. In this case, uh, neither lambda n or lambda p is 0. Okay. I mean, if it is 0, that GDS will be 0, that is all. The expression is still correct. It is GDS 1 plus GDS 3. If lambda n happens to be 0, GDS 1 will be 0. That is all. Okay. So, you have to calculate the GDS value from uh, the lambda and the bias current that is flowing in the transistor. Any questions about this? So, again you please derive this for yourselves and when you see a differential pair in most cases you should be and if you have if it has differential inputs like this you should be able to use this model. Okay. Any questions here? Okay. So, this is the model that we use for most often for the differential pair by itself. Now, because we have a differential pair that is something that accepts
differential inputs. This itself is like an op amp, it is not a great op amp, it will have a gain that is similar to the gain of a single transistor, right. But we do have a structure like this, right. We have two inputs and an output. This is the output terminal. which is the positive input terminal of the op amp gate of m1 or m2 m m1 yeah i mean we saw that the current the model is a model has a current in that direction norton current so if this is plus so this is plus and this is minus and it will be biased at some value and i'll represent the differential input like this okay in reality, we will never take an op amp and apply an input this way, okay. It will there will be feedback around the op amp, but I will show the uh, show the input like that, okay, and it will have some V out, right. So, this is the plus input, this is the minus input. I have applied V I C M plus V D by 2. V I C M minus V D by 2, okay. And the model for this would be the small signal model is what we just derived. It is a Norton current source G M 1 V D in parallel with G D S 1 plus G D S 3, that is the conductance, okay. Yes. Yeah, so the question is what happens instead of uh, applying a voltage differentially, I apply a common mode input. Let us assume that this differential input is not there, I apply the same increment to the two sides. First of all, what is the quiescent voltage over there? What is the output quiescent voltage? Assuming M1 is exactly matched to M2, M3 is exactly matched to M4, what is that? V D D minus V S G 3 at a current I naught by 2, okay. So, now I will apply common mode increments. It is basically like saying I will change the value of V I C M. What happens to the output voltage? It would not change, why? No current will flow where? Yeah. What is that? Current has to be. So, again by symmetric considerations, first of all they have the same V G S right, M 1 and M 2 have the same V G S, M 3 and M 4 have the same V S G okay. and like before we can imagine that this is different from this right and uh, try and calculate uh, what happens. Uh, we can imagine that this is different from this one. But then you will find a contradiction that M2 has to be more than uh, carry more current than uh, M1 or and the upper side you will have a contradiction and so on. So, you will conclude that this voltage has to be the same as that voltage, okay. So, that means the currents will be equally distributed, it is I naught by 2, I naught by 2, and that voltage is also the same, right. So, there will be no incremental output at all. Is this clear? As long as this tail current is I naught, then half of the current goes this way, half of the current goes that way. The voltage at this node and this node will be V D D minus V S G 3 at a current of I naught by 2. So, it does not change at all. So, that means that what is the common mode gain of the circuit? 0, it does not react to common mode. That is actually a great advantage of the differential pair. Now, what is the feature or something that we have not considered that will make the common mode gain non 0? Is, the, is there any non ideal feature that will make the common mode gain non 0? What is that? Change in? No, no, that is not a, that is not a response to a signal, right. Let us say you have a set of transistors with different parameters, its gain will be different for differential gains, but the common mode behavior will still be exactly the same, that is all. The question is now the output does not move if you change both the inputs together like that, okay. 
what aspect of the circuit will make the output change. When you have a common mode input, when you have a differential input, of course, it will change by a large amount. But when you have a common mode input, is there anything that will make the output change? I mean, first of all, is there anything we have considered ideal here? What is that? The current source. Okay. What What is the meaning of a non-ideal current source? What happens? No, I mean, I want to model some non-linearity, non-ideality of the current source. So, what should I? What is the extra stuff? I have to have a, I have to have a resistor across that. Okay. Now, what happens if VICM changes, or basically I have a common mode increment? What do you think will happen? Voltage? A voltage at the tail node. So, let us say VICM increases that is I have a positive value of the common mode increment the tail node voltage also increases. So, what happens? Yeah. So, the total current here which is this I naught plus the current in R naught that will increase. So, what happens to the output voltage? It will fall right I mean this will be whatever you do this will be half of the total current and this will be half of the total current, but the total current is increasing slightly. Okay. What is approximately the increase? So, let us say at the operating point, at the operating point this current is I naught that is when I have V i C m and V i C m there is some current flowing here that is what I call I naught. Okay. So, now I apply an increment plus V C m and plus V C m and this current source is known to have an output resistance R naught. Okay. What is the total current that is drawn from the two transistors? R naught V naught what is V s? Yeah. I mean you calculated the what is the tail increment if I increment the two sides by V C m what will be the increment in the tail voltage? Uh, uh, v C m okay. that we calculated assuming an ideal current source, but approximately the same thing holds. Okay. If both these rise up by V C m the tail also rises up by V C m approximately we know that there is uh, some current change, but approximately that is the case. So, then what is the increase in current that is being drawn below? VCM by R naught. Okay. So each of these currents, instead of being I naught by two and I naught by two, will be I naught by two plus VCM by two R naught. So what is the output voltage? It's easier to calculate from this side. Okay. Since you brought it up, now you calculate this. What is the small signal voltage here? Please put down the small signal model and calculate it. Ignore the GDS for every one of these transistors. Okay. So, M1, 2, 3, 4 have GDS values of 0. You assume that the current source is not ideal. Please find the output voltage, that is all. Okay. And the easy thing to do is to notice that whether you have GDS or not, this side and that side will be the same. So, you just have to find the voltage at this point. So, please do that. The small signal voltage when I apply an increment of V C m, okay, when I apply a common mode increment of V C m. With a common mode input, you can do the usual small signal analysis. On each side we have an input V C m and here we just have R naught which is the uh, output resistance of the tail current source. Okay. So, that is what makes a big difference right before whatever current was going up from M 1 like this had to go up in M 2. Now, that is not necessarily the case the sum of those two is not 0. Okay. So, if I call this V s, this is G m 1 times V c m minus V s, this is G m 1 times V c m minus V s as well. 
okay and here if i call this vd1 this is gm3 times vd1 and this is also gm3 times vd1 okay so now uh, like i said you just find the voltage on this side the other side has to be the same that we have found from i mean that you can't find from this right because this node has no resistance at all or you have to ground this and find the incremental current going out of this one so let me do that so let me terminate this in a short circuit just like i did for the uh, differential case so anyway the point is i mean the current here is vs by r not and that has to be equal to 2 gm1 vcm minus vs okay so what is vs what is it 2 gm1 by 1 by r not okay times vcm this fine what have you seen an expression like this source follower yeah gmr by gmr plus 1 it is exactly the same okay because when these two are uh, this side and that side they have the same excitation right the left and right so basically i apply an input like that so what is this circuit i just have i'll write it as m1 comma 2 that's like pasting m1 and m2 together okay i mean let's not worry about what's happening at the drain because that's not relevant here and i have a current source so it is really just a so and a load of r not okay so it is actually a source follower as far as common mode inputs is concerned if you have differential inputs what is the tail node voltage if you have perfectly differential inputs plus vd by 2 minus vd by 2 what is the what is at the tail node nearly zero okay so the tail node doesn't respond for differential inputs if your uh, voltage is move this way but if both of them move together then the tail mode node moves with it and approximately by the same amount earlier we assumed it will move by the same amount but there is a small uh, the this factor is slightly less than 1 that depends on the value of gm1 times r not okay so after this vd1 is quite easy it's basically gm1 times vcm minus vs and this is also gm3 times vd1 so what will be this voltage minus gm1 vcm minus vs divided by gm3 okay we have a diode connected transistor here which is equivalent to a resistance of 1 by gm3 so it's whatever current is flowing downwards times minus 1 by gm3 okay and how much is this number vcm minus vs it is 1 by 2 gm1 or not plus 1 times vcm okay so this voltage vd1 is minus gm1 by gm3 times that okay times that is that okay so when you have a differential pair like this when with perfect matching whatever change you see here you will see on that side okay so the voltage output will be in fact equal to this you can also find the current here how much current will be flowing there how much current will be flowing out if you terminate the differential pair in an incremental short circuit how much zero because i mean this is again a perfect current mirror right so this current was equal to this current so it is mirrored here nothing flows out there okay so again it doesn't react to common mode it's just another way of showing that okay is this fine so anyway the voltage gain the small signal voltage gain of a differential pair what is it for differential signals what is that g1 
j 1 by j d s 1 plus j d s 3 ok. For common mode signals, no V naught by V C m what is that? We just calculated it right minus g m 1 by g m 3 times 1 by 2 g m 1 r naught plus 1. Is that okay? And yeah, but I mean the current is 0, what is the output impedance of this? We do not have any GDSs, so it is infinity. So, the voltage output is uh, not 0, okay. So, it is slightly confusing, but that is how it is. If you assume that this is much greater than 1, approximately how much is this? Minus 1 by 2 gm 3 or not, you can use that as an approximation, okay. So, if you have an arbitrary excitation V 1 and V 2, how will you find out the output voltage? Yeah, you separate it into differential and common mode parts, differential part will be multiplied by this, common mode part will be multiplied by that, okay. And an important feature of an op amp is what is known as a common mode, uh, this is denoted by A D, the differential gain and this is A C M, the common mode gain and common mode rejection ratio this is known this is basically the absolute value of A C M by A D ok. How much it rejects No, rather usually this is A D by A C M ok. How much it rejects the common mode changes as compared to the differential change ok. What is the ideal value of C M R R? Remember the op amp should only amplify the differential voltage. So, what is ideally C M R R? infinity, it should be infinity, in reality it would not be infinite, it will be some finite value, how much is that? What will that be for our example? Hmm? Yeah, so it is basically this expression divided by that one ok. Is this fine? Oh, which way does it go? So, positive terminal means if you want a positive increment at the output, which side will you push up, left side or the right side? If you want a positive increment at the output, that is the, you want the output voltage to increase, okay. So, which one will you increase, the gate of M1 or gate of M2? M1, yeah. If you, what happens is if the gate of M1 increases and gate of M2 decreases, the current here in M 2 will fall down, current in M 1 will increase that will come through the current mirror. So, the current being pushed up from the top will increase, current being pulled down from the bottom will reduce. So, this node voltage will go up ok. So, that is why that is the and that is evident from the expression also we got the gain expression to be plus 2 m uh, plus g m 1 times uh, plus g m 1 divided by g d s 1 plus g d s 3 right. So, that means that uh, when v d is defined that way this terminal being positive output will be positive ok. So, you can see that for this uh, simple op amp we just have I mean we do not have any embellishments yet we will see the problems with this. The gain is like the gain of a single MOS transistor ok g m by g d s and the common mode gain is like the inverse of the gain of a single MOS transistor 1 over g m I mean this is like g d s by g m right r naught is basically g d s of the tail current source is not it common mode rejection ratio. So, if you look at an op amp data sheet, this is one of the things that will be mentioned ok. So, this differential pair with current mirror load has a high, high differential gain and a small common mode gain. In fact, common mode gain is much smaller than 1 right. 
It's roughly speaking inverse of the transistor's gain. It is GDS 0 divided by 2 GM 3. Okay. So, maybe the differential gain will be about 50 or 100 and the common mode gain will be about 0 0.01 or 0 0.02. So, the common mode rejection is very high. So, that is why this stage is the most popular input stage for any op amp. Okay. Every uh, op amp will start from this. Is this okay? Huh? I do not know, it entirely depends, but I mean you could not probably get a differential gain of 50, a common mode gain of 1 by 50 or something. So, the common mode rejection ratio will be 2500, but very much dependent on the choice of uh, uh, values. Okay. Any questions about this? I mean if you have looked at an op amp data sheet, these are the parameters that you would have seen. You would know the gain of the op amp. The gain of this op amp is not yet adequate for us, right, because this is just G of the order of G m by G d s. It will be 50 or 100 or something at most. Okay. So, what do we have to do to increase the gain further? put more stages right that we will do, but even this I mean sometimes a gain of 100 may be enough and this itself can be used as an op amp in some restricted conditions. Okay. So, let us see what we can do with this, is this okay? the analysis part the differential gain and the common mode gain and so on. Actually, to show the complete picture, I should show, a, show an NMOS current source here, okay, M0, and it will be, of course, biased from a current mirror. I can call this I0, this is M00. Uh, frequently, I will show this as a current source, but and it is actually not relevant whether I show the current source. The only part for which it makes a difference is the common mode gain, okay. And also, I mean, swing limits and so on. So, now that we have so many transistors in the op amp, right, you have to be quite comfortable with making proper approximations at the right places. So, for instance, for operating points, you never consider lambda because if you do that, the whole thing will become so messy that you will never get the answer and it does not make much difference anyway. Okay. But and again, for uh, differential gain, what matters are the lambda of these four transistors M12. M4, okay. But uh, modeling those and not modeling the GDS of M0 will give you totally meaningless common mode gain. For common mode gain, even if you ignore everything else, you have to model the output resistance of this one, okay. This one, okay. So, how could we do that without using? One possibility, I will just show you the answer is this. So, let us say we had this uh, structure where we bias at the where we uh, sense at the source and feedback to the gate. This is just one example, this can be done with anything. How did we do that? Sense at the source, feedback to the gate. How did we do this? So, let us say we had some I naught here and we have to use negative feedback. Let us say we make that using an op amp. Okay. That is the those are the signs of the op amp and this I will call V ref. Okay. Now, his question is okay, we do not have a current source I naught. So, what should we do? What could we do? We have discussed this before. We could potentially replace it with a resistor. Okay. So, if we do replace it with a resistor, what is the current flowing here? How much current? What is that? V ref by what is this voltage? Assuming everything is working in uh, negative feedback properly, this is V ref. Okay. So, this will be V ref by let me call this R naught, it will be V ref by R naught. Okay. So, let us say we had a way of accurately setting V ref and also have uh, one accurate resistor. Maybe we can have one resistor that is off chip. Okay. 
the resistors on chip what happens is i mean they'll all be matched to each other but they could be off by some serious amounts okay even plus minus 20% percent and so on but i mean getting 1% resistor outside is very easy you may have used it in some projects or whatever okay so you can have a chip with one particular resistor that's outside that's one of the ways of doing it sometimes what you do is you have a programmable uh, set of resistors inside and then you can uh, actually measure it and set it to be accurate but the point is you can get an accurate resistance and it turns out you can also get an accurate voltage okay so it's using a circuit that is known as a band gap reference the name is actually quite meaningful what is the value of silicon band gap 1.1 volt okay that is at room temperature so it turns out that the band gap itself is slightly dependent on temperature and the extrapolated band gap at 0 kelvin that is 1.206 volts okay so there is a circuit that you make using bipolar transistors that gives you exactly this voltage i mean it's not coincidentally 1.206 volts i mean i can take 12 volts and divide it by 10 i get 1.2 volts it's not like that okay so if you put in all of the device models have you come to the model of the bipolar transistor so you know that do you see the band gap somewhere in the expressions or in a diode where 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 is that huh gain no <laughs> what uh, what is there in that mo model of a diode what parameters do you have id what is id what is it called i mean okay yeah reverse saturation current is right or it's called id or id is whatever fine what is the expression for is itself anyway it turns out that it has exponential minus eg not by kt okay where eg not is the uh, eg is the band gap okay so if you work out all the details you can get rid of all of the other temperature dependences the point is this is a temperature independent okay this eg not it's some roughly like the it's not a uh, absolutely fundamental constant but it's a good material constant right it's the extrapolated band gap of silicon at 0 kelvin right and you can make a circuit in which you can remove all the other terms that are dependent on temperature so this one as you sweep the temperature it will give you 1.206 volts exactly so it is actually a very widely used circuit so if you do this and let's assume so you have accurate voltage accurate resistance you can get an accurate current then what what should we do Huh? mirror where somewhere else so what you can do is you can have now pmos mirrors going from here and you can have any number of current sources now right all of them will give you vg not by r not or some scaled version of it okay and this can be done with other circuits also you can uh, yeah so what can be done is i mean there are many ways first of all uh, the current of an op amp does not need to be exact okay so let's say the current varies from you want it to be 100 microamperes but let's say it varies from 80 to 120 microamperes what happens to the op amp maybe not much so you have to see okay so if that's the case you just study i mean let's say i will uh, bias it with a resistor instead of a current source okay then you can figure out how it behaves if the current variation is too much and it's going out of the desired region then you try to do something else but otherwise i mean the op amp may be able to work with a wide variety of currents okay maybe not that wide but at least plus minus 20 or 30 percent so that is okay and even if you uh, even if it needs an exact current this is used sometimes that the tail current of this can be derived back from this one okay so this whole snake eating its tail business you can this is known as self bias okay you use something for biasing and you use the generated bias to bias the same circuit all these circuits will have a particular problem that it also can get stuck at zero current okay the current is zero the op amp doesn't start up nothing else starts up the current will be zero forever so this type of circuits will need a startup circuit which also can be built that's not a problem it can be done but usually in this particular op amp right so this type of op amp for instance you don't need any swing limit i mean this voltage is known this voltage is known you don't need the output to swing a lot okay so it will most likely work with a variable current and it will be fine with that okay so it's not in every occasion that you need an exactly defined current but if you do you have there are solutions to obtain that okay so and this can be done with other circuits as well even drain feedback right how do you make drain feedback usually you just connect the drain to the gate but your more sophisticated version would be the 
this ok. So, now with a p mos it will be the other way around I can have a resistor here and I can have V g 0 plus V d d the voltage drop across this is known. So, the current is known and you can go on making copies of the current as many as you want. So, there are many ways to do this ok. So, at least in principle you should be convinced that you can make uh, one master current source and from that you can make any number of copies ok. So, we assume that we have something known as a current reference available there is a lot of uh, I mean lot of circuits have been proposed there are also ways of uh, making current source without using this band gap reference which will still be accurately defined and so on ok. But those things I mean it does not make sense to talk about them without knowing some engineering details inside the chip right. One of the main problems of any IC uh, design is temperature dependence ok because usually semiconductor characteristics quite vary quite widely with temperature. And there are also well known ways of uh, cancelling temperature dependence usually if you have some positive temperature coefficient and negative you can make sure that it cancels somewhere ok. Typically what happens to if you make a resistor using a metal what happens to its resistance as temperature increases it increases, but that is not true of every material some semiconductor materials it goes the other way. So, you can have multiple combinations which will uh, which will cancel out the dependence ok. So, and the band gap also is like that what happens to diode voltage if a diode is biased at a constant current what happens to the voltage across it as you change the temperature. Let us say you take a diode biased at 1 milliamp and then you heat up the diode what happens to the voltage across it. There are only two possible answers <laughs> it will decrease increase why what is that? So, I naught exponential V d by V t this is the diode current ok. So, the diode voltage V d is V t natural logarithm of I d by I naught ok. So, what happens to this as you increase the temperature? Uh, it will increase that is because this increases, but it turns out that I naught increases very sharply with temperature ok as an exponential I just told you right I naught has exponential E by k t. So, actually the diode voltage will reduce with temperature approximately at 2 milli volt per degree Celsius ok. So, you can use it as a thermometer also it will I think the, did you know this 1.8 volt milli volt per degree Celsius no ok. <laughs> so, <laughs> the temperature coefficient of a diode I think it is probably less than 2, but somewhere around that ok. So, we will continue from here we can use this itself as an op amp and we can also make it more sophisticated.